Hey there, it's Nathalie. So I had a couple of customers ask for a uh, two color scrub cap with no ponytail. And so I have developed a pattern for that. And I'm gonna do a little tutorial about how to do this. It probably took me about 30 minutes to make it. That doesn't count how long it took me to make the pattern. But anyway, so you're just gonna use two little colors. Be sure, if you like this video, give me a little thumbs up like and subscribe you know the drill all right so what you're going to need to do is download the pattern it's over on my website and i'm going to put it in my etsy store two pieces of fabric a uh, quarter of a yard a piece uh, some elastic and now you can use a quarter inch three eighths inch or half a half inch i used a half inch uh, so download the pattern and cut it out and make sure that you do your printer set settings to actual size it's a pdf there's a one inch square to make sure you've got it the right size so I'm just cut that out and use paper scissors. Don't use your good scissors. Use your paper scissors for that. Now, whenever I did the back, I left a little extension at the bottom so it made it easier to tape to and to hold on to. And uh, so there we are. So I'm going to cut three of, the, of those pieces and then these are going to be cut on the fold. So the back is cut on the lengthwise on the fold. I measured it off at like about 15 inches or something like that fold it in half and then and then cut that then you're going to fold the for the front you're going to fold it the opposite direction okay so anyway just watch the video to see and it's also in the instructions too so just watch those folds and then you should have enough left over if you wanted to like to make a mask if you still are wearing mask then you could you could have uh have a mask so cut all around those, those edges. Now there's a 3 8 inch seam allowance included in this. And uh, so you don't have to worry about adding that to it. So cut around those edges. There we go. And then you're going to also want to cut a little tiny notch in the fold on that curved edge on the front. And then on the fold edge on the back little notch and it's marked on your pattern so that you can know where those notches need to be cut you're going to match those together whenever you get ready to assemble this so but we're not going to go to the sewing machine just yet I'm just showing you kind of where the notches are so that you can see they don't have to be big just enough that you can tell the center back and the center front all right so now we're going to cut we're going to use the second color this is our band color and uh, I'm not folding the fabric just in half because I don't want to just like waste fabric. I'm very cheap and very frugal when it comes to that. So I'm going to kind of scooch that down and fold it in uh, so that I'm not wasting the, uh, the other end of the fabric. And then I'm going to cut three sections, one for the band and then two, two lengths for the ties. Now these are make a, a 20 inch tie. If you want your ties shorter, that's an easy fix whenever you get after you get them stitched up you can shorten them to whatever length that you need them maybe anywhere from 16 to 20 inches is probably a, a good length it's not wrapping around your ponytail so yeah so however long you want those ties all right so there's my three pieces and they're cut on the fold all right now you're going to take the band and the front and put pretty sides together and I'm going to pin a little bit away from the seam allowance again I've got a 3 8 inch seam that's the width of my pressure foot fold the ties in half and put a pin in them and again not where I'm going to have to sew over them or anything like that just fold it in half lengthwise and we'll sew on this one we'll sew the length and across one end now I'm not sure how come I did not show this uh, completely but 3 8 inch is the width of my presser foot, so you're going to stitch 3 8 inch, the band, to the front of the, the cap. And I do a little back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And I'm sorry that I didn't get that recorded really good for that. And then you're going to open this out and then fold that band in half again. And you can see where I've got the edges, the cut edges are together. And again, put that pin down away from it's closer to the fold, all right, away from those cut edges because we're going to fold this in again. Now I am stitching, uh, rolling this to the back side, and I'm going to stitch from the front. Just don't freak out about this. Just take a breath and just relax. I'm going to show you, all right. 
and this way I don't have a top stitching on the front you can top stitch on the front but you don't have to all right so I'm gonna do that fold just a tiny bit over my stitch line because I want whenever I stitch from the top side I want to make sure that I catch that little nip of fabric that's on the back side so however however you need to put those pins in crossways or lengthways that's fine all right so see right there there's my stitch and i'm going to go over just a smidge like just about that much now i'm going to turn it and uh, pin it from the front you can see where i've got those pins now i'm going to double check when i put my pin in and make sure how much of that fabric is going to show on the how that stitch is going to work on the back side so it's just a little tiny section that you're going to catch just making sure that you're going to catch it okay i know i'm talking fast i know most of the time y'all watch the videos about three minutes so anyway so i've got all my pins done from the front get rid of all those pins in the back so i don't sew over those now i'm going to stitch in the ditch really close now to that fold and trying not to catch that polka dot piece of fabric just a straight stitch and just a second I'm going to show you how that stitch is going to look on the back side go slow I mean you don't have to do this all speeded and everything so just take your time on this see on the back side it's just barely barely caught but it is caught and then you get a nice smooth finish on the front side I'm going to go all the way to the end. Okay, so the next thing that you're going to want to do is trim off the excess. This one didn't have a whole lot, but in case you've got more uh, excess hanging off the end to go ahead and get get rid of that and just kind of clean those edges up now I'm going to stitch my ties again using a 3 8 inch seam and going across one end and then down the side the length of and I'm going to do this on both of them you could do a half inch seam if you wanted to but a 3 8 inch to the edge of my presser foot works really well for me so I'm going to do the second one now same thing all the way down the end get those pins out of the way and then I'm going to clip the corners clip close to that uh, corner stitch but do not clip your threads <clears throat> and then you can use some people call it a pokey stick I grabbed one of my uh, marking pins not the pin end not the not where you're going to get ink or marks on there and just poke that through and turn it right side out and kind of manipulate the corners and get them pulled out so if you've got a dowel stick, a skewer is probably too pointy. You may not want to do that because it's going to poke a hole maybe in your fabric. So maybe a, a, little, a little dowel stick, a smaller dowel stick, or, or a crochet hook or something like that. Anyway, pencil, the eraser end of a pencil would be good. And then you're going to want to press it. So I go to the, the not my ironing board, just a towel that I have laid out, and press it and steam it before I stitch it. It makes it a whole lot easier to top stitch it. But I'm going to press both of those, and uh, you can go ahead at this time and press the band if you want to. It doesn't really need it, but you sure can do that if you want to do that. So getting both of those done. Now we're going to top stitch, just an edge stitch. Uh, if you want to do a quarter inch or three-eighths inch top stitch, you can. But I just came close to the edge and just did an edge stitch all the way around down to the bottom end or the end that's going to be exposed and then back around and do this on both of the ties makes for a nice clean finish and then whenever you're washing it oh and I didn't say this originally you want to wash and dry your fabric before you start so it's already kind of pre-shrunk so then I just attached those ties to that band uh, on the front side of the cap and we haven't attached the back yet but we're going to do a little close stitch right towards the edge of the end to attach the tie to the band area just like that 
and you can see it's close to the edge but it's caught now then and I did that on both ends now I've matched the notches of the front and the back and then I'm just going to pin all the way around down around the curve just kind of you know let that fabric kind of ease into itself and then when you get down to the area where the band and the tie connect you're gonna have uh, some excess hanging off and it's marked on your pattern where that should where where that excess is that's gonna be that's gonna house or uh, be the place where you're gonna put your elastic here in a little bit but for right now it's just going to come off the end. So you're going to pin it all the way around uh, even on the other side. Just make sure that that notch is right there in the middle of the front and, and the back. So now I'm going to attach this and I'm going to do a back stitch 3 8 inch seam straight stitch and then once I get this uh, and I'm sorry that my fingers are in the way, my hands are in the way, just kind of pulling a little bit where I need to and twisting a little bit where I need to just to make sure because when you're sewing around curves and curves that go the opposite direction sometimes you have to just kind of like convince yourself that you're smarter than the piece of fabric and convince the fabric that you're smarter than the fabric. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, whenever I get this all stitched around I serge the edges. If you've got a serger you can do that. If not then you can zigzag to give yourself a little clean finish on that and keep it from raveling out. Or you can just do a double stitch and maybe a pinked edge. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can finish off that edge on the inside of the cap. Alright, so now after I serge it and after I finish the inside, it's ready for me to turn up that bottom part to put my elastic in. And again, you can use half inch elastic, 3 eighths inch elastic, or quarter inch elastic. It doesn't really matter. So I'm folding that up along the bottom side of that band and again I'm moving that pin close to the fold away from where I'm going to I'm going to have one more fold at the top so I want to make sure that I'm clear of that. Okay now I'm going to fold under about a half an inch on that cut edge. Fold that under to make my casing and you can see my little surged edge right there on the edge of my cap, on the edge of the seam. Pin that in place. And then we're going to do an edge stitching at the top. You can stitch the bottom at that fold if you want to, but it's not necessary. And I didn't. I just stitched at the top. Back stitch, forward and backwards and forward again, and stitch close to the edge. All right now I've got a big safety pin and my piece of elastic and I'm going to thread through that and carefully, carefully make sure I don't pull too far and if I do just kind of ooch it back out. I want that elastic to be right at the edge of that fold or maybe just a tiny bit exposed. And So I'm going to pin that in place and go ahead and stitch that a double stitch I'm going to stitch like 3 8 inch away and then I'm going to come back over and stitch right up on that edge. Both of those rows of stitching are going to catch that elastic. Now I still, my safety pin is still inside that casing with the, uh, uh, the elastic still attached to it. So I'm going to turn it around and get that other side. There's my pin. Now this is real important. Don't release that safety pin just yet. So you're going to pull that on through, kind of smooth this out just a little bit so you can have a smooth area to stitch on. So find where that end of that elastic is going to be, ease that back in, and then pin about an inch away from that with that elastic flat, not stretched. Make sure it's secure, make sure you have that elastic pinned, and then release your safety pin. And so now the elastic is still right there at the little edge, you can see that. And I'm going to stitch this, a double stitch on this one too. I'm going to move 3 eighths of an inch in, back stitch uh, at the beginning and at the folded edge. Stitch, back stitch, and go ahead and back all the way out and then scoot over right to the edge. Again, catching the fold and the piece of elastic so the elastic is caught in there twice. 
So now then I can go ahead and take my pen out. That elastic is caught good. This turned out pretty cute for my people with short hair. Uh, again, if you need to shorten those ties, shorten them a little bit. I'm putting the link in the description box below for the pattern. It's for sale at my Etsy store. I've given all uh, my other scrub cat patterns. I've given away over 30,000 of those patterns. And so I'm just going to put it and I'm also going to bundle uh, all four of my scrub cap patterns together. And those will also be in my Etsy store. And again, I want to thank you so much for watching, for liking, subscribing, for your sweet comments whenever, and for your constructive comments. If I need to change something or do something different, I like that too. And I will see you next time.